the shop. As you can see, our, our painting project is still right where we left it, but that's good because I had several days for the paint to get good and cured, nice and dry. Overall, I'm real happy with the way it came out for a brushed on paint job. Probably do a little more touching up here in the end. I'm sure we'll nick it and ding it a little bit along the way. The next step I want to spend a little bit of time talking to you about is the base of the windmill or how it's how it's fastened into the ground. I bought this off the chicken farm and I got it at a real reasonable price considering its condition and its age, but I had to take it down. Now it's a four post windmill, which means it's like a pyramid, a tall skinny pyramid. The way that they anchored it into the ground is they had a five foot leg that you dug a hole put the leg in the ground and then put concrete down in the hole. So you essentially wind it up with a couple of feet of concrete with earth on top of it. The way I took this windmill down, I set a gen pole, we climbed to the top of it, we disconnected the gearbox, wheel, and tail vane, and we took it down as a, an assembly. Uh, the gen pole that I made just uses a boat winch, lift it up, and then some guide ropes, we lowered it to the ground and, and put it on the trailer. The tower itself, the way we got it over is we tied guide ropes to the top of the tower. One rope was a pull rope that was going to pull the tower over. The rope going the opposite direction was tied to an oak tree and we used a friction device. If you're a climber, you've done any kind of climbing or repelling, you probably know what a bar rack is. I used a bar rack. So there's, there was four posts, one, two, three, four. What I did is I went, if the, the windmill was going to go this way, I went over with a, an oxy fuel cutting torch and I cut Right here, on the opposite side, I cut around, but I left the forward edge on both sides. Then I came to the back and I had the guy that was gonna do the pulling, put a little bit of pressure on it pulling, and the person on the friction rope standing by to, to, to lower it over. Then I took my torch and I cut both of these legs all the way in two. So essentially they pulled it over. And when they pulled it over, this piece that I left on each side just bent pretty as pie but it kept the, kept the legs from being able to kick out. Now, I pretty much destroyed the legs, but I had no way to get them out of the ground anyway. These anchors are down in the ground, and, and essentially this is right at ground level. This is a piece that I've had to cut off. So I went down to my local steel supplier, and I picked up a stick of uh, hot dip galvanized. And I called originally to ask them if they could get me some galvanized exactly like this. This is two and a quarter by two and a quarter by 11 gauge or eighth inch. 11 gauge is real close to an eighth of an inch and I'm not sure what it measures out, but it's really not that critical. The steel supplier said, well, that's a proprietary size. I can't get it. It's not made in a mill and sold to the general public. So my next uh, step was to go and order a piece of two and a half by two and a half by three sixteenths angle. Now, note, Really similar in size, this is thicker. Can't go wrong there, I mean it's stronger than what they put in the ground. Even, even if it was the same thickness, the width, is, the width is wider, so it's stronger. So these legs are about five feet long and they have a little T foot on, welded on the end of them, like such. They take a piece of galvanized metal and essentially they weld a foot on them like this. This foot drops down into the ground. The foot helps keep it from sinking down into the ground any deeper. It also gives the concrete, when you pour the concrete in the bottom, something to bite on or hold on. I took this 20, it was uh, just shy of 21 foot stick. I cut it into four pretty even pieces in my handy Ellis bandsaw here. And then I cut, stacked them together, got the ends even, and just cut just shy of six inches off the end. Now why that number? I have no idea, I'll be honest, I just, I've kind of made it up in my head. Uh, if you want to cut eight inches or whatever, it doesn't matter. I wanted to keep a lot of a lot of anchor still in the ground. We're gonna weld these on there, and we're gonna make these little footsies, as we're gonna call them, the little footsies uh, on the bottom. But this is hot dip galvanized, and galvanizing uh, is a real pain to weld. Now a lot of guys will tell you I've been weld galvanizing fencing forever. If you weld galvanizing and you don't use the proper safety precaution, it could be detrimental to your health and it could be deadly. Um, there's some chemical processes and I'm not a chemist, but I can tell you they go on with the galvanizing when it burns. It's primarily a zinc compound, but it has other heavy metals in it and those things get released into the smoke that you breathe. So it, it is controllable and we can weld it safely. The only other step I have to do is just drill a few holes. Now, this is the post that was sticking out of the ground. It went about five feet in the ground and was in concrete. 
So I've got to mimic these holes. Now when I cut these, I just left them bolted onto the bottom of the tower, and I've since brought the tower here and straightened out some of the legs on the tower that were a little bent and twisted over the years. And I unbolted these, and I'm gonna use these as a pattern to make sure that my holes go back in the right spot. everybody we talked about galvanizing making you sick or, or, or being bad for you and poisoning you um, what happens is this zinc burns off and it combines with the oxygen in the atmosphere and it makes zinc oxide when you breathe that in it gives you an incredibly killer headache I've heard it lasts several days sometimes similar to a migraine maybe a little bit worse um, so we definitely don't want to do that and we're also concerned about some heavy metals there could potentially be heavy metals used in the plating process like cadmium and chromium these things alter our DNA and we definitely don't want to breathe them. You can see where I've ground off the galvanizing. Now we know we can't get all the galvanizing off. Some of it's going to burn off. Here's, a, here's an N95 mask. This is a model 8212. That's the one you want to buy for welding galvanizing. We're going to take the shop fan behind us. We're going to turn around, put it back behind where the camera is and have it blow or, or I'm sorry, suck those fumes away and blow them out into the outside. I'm not used to doing a lot of outside welding anymore in the shop. Most of the stuff I do is TIG or MIG and it's in the shop, so I had to go out to my scrap pile and dig out this, this uh, old table that I used to use. And I apologize for it being a little rusty, but it'll serve the purpose well today. We're going to weld it using some uh, Lincoln Electric Excalibur 7018 rod. It's probably one of my favorite rods to run. It runs really, really smooth and uh, it gets in there and burns in real well. If I couldn't move, remove the galvanizing because of some specific process and I had to weld it, you could also probably use a 6013 or a 6011 rod. Those will burn through the galvanizing well and still give you a satisfactory weld. But I'm gonna just fasten it in place with one of these really cool magnetic clamps that Lincoln makes. This one actually has been loaned to me. Um, I'm not sure if the person that loaned it to me is gonna get it back because it's pretty trick. It's, it, you can turn it on and off. I really like that. You can, it comes on and you can just turn the switch and it falls off. I've used them the little cheapy uh, Chinese made magnetic clamps and those are to me pretty much worthless but this one's uh, slicker than owl poop and it 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 holds in place so I'm gonna get it uh, get my safety gear on get that N95 the fan set up get this thing clamped in place and I'll bring you back and get you a little shot of uh, some welding happening Okay, got you a little close up. Some of the welds here. Yeah, not the greatest thing in the world, but I'll do just fine for what we need. There's a little bit of that galvanizing that burned off that white powdery substance. Here's a real nice ugly one for you. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed what you saw here today. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and like us on Facebook, please. Somewhere down below here is a link. We've got a lot more really cool stuff coming. Is that right, camera guy? Is there a link down there? Send me a comment. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Click whatever link. Click something. See you soon.